days I've been held in your hands From the moments that I wake up Until I lay my head I will sing Of the goodness of God All my life you have been faithful And all my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God I love your voice You have led me through the fire And in darkest night You are close like no other I've known you as a father I've known you as a friend And I have lived In the goodness of God Oh, for all my life You have been faithful Yes, you have been All my life You have been so so good with every breath that I am able oh I will sing of the goodness of God oh all my life all my life you have been faithful Yes, you have been all my life. You have been so, so good with every breath that I am able. Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. Yes, I will sing of the goodness of God Sing all my life All my life You have been faithful Yes, you have been so good All my life You have been so, so good With every breath that I Yes, I will sing of the goodness of God. Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. Sing all my life, all our lives, you have been faithful. You've been so good to us, Lord. All our lives, you have been so, so good. With every breath that we are able, oh, we will sing of the goodness of God. Oh, we will sing of the goodness of God. So I will sing and I will sing of the goodness of God. Yes, I will sing of the goodness of God. Oh, we will sing of the mercies of God. We will see of the mercies of God. You are enthroned on 
The ministry of the senior pastor and Thrumant Assembly, Reverend Deji Olabode. Good morning. It's a great privilege to welcome you to God's presence this morning. Let's lift up our hands and thank Jesus. And Father, we are saying thank you for the ninth day uh, or the tenth day of this fast. We're thanking you for how far you brought us. We're thanking you for what you've been saying to us. We thank you for all you did yesterday night. And we thank you because this morning you will build on all you have started with our lives in the name of the lord jesus thank you because you are building in us the capacity it takes to sustain what is next in the name of the lord jesus my father i humble myself before you asking that whatever is profitable for your people will be shared in our brief session with them this morning i'm asking for burdens to be lifted yokes to be destroyed the veils to be taken off 
in the name of the Lord Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' precious name, we pray. Our anchor scripture, good morning, you're welcome. Our anchor scripture is the same in Psalms of 89 verse 19. The Bible says, Then you spake in the vision to your Holy One, and said, I have given help to one who is mighty, and I have exalted one chosen from amongst the people. A second scripture is the same, Isaiah chapter 40, verse 28. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth, neither faints nor is weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the weak and to those who have no might. He increases strength. Even the youths shall faint and be weary. Young men shall utterly fall. But those of us who wait upon the Lord in this season shall renew our strength, shall mount up with wings like eagles, we shall run and not be weary. We shall walk and not faint. May the Lord bless the reading of his word in Jesus' mighty name. I want to use uh, for a foundation Numbers of the 14, verse 20 to verse 24. Then the Lord said, I have pardoned according to your word, but truly, as I live, all the earth shall be filled with the glory of the Lord because of all these men who have seen my glory and the signs which I did in Egypt and in the wilderness and have put me to the test now these ten times and have not heeded my voice, they certainly shall not see the land which I swore to their fathers, nor shall any of these or those who rejected me see it, but my servant kill him, because he has a different spirit in him and has followed me fully. I will bring him into the land where he went and his descendants shall inherit it. May the Lord bless the reading of his word in Jesus' name. I want to use for a brief title this morning, The Spirit of Caleb. The Spirit, the Spirit of Caleb. Father, I ask your blessing upon the word in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, for a while, We've been saying that the next level of this work, the next level of our lives is grand. But that next level depends largely on the capacity or the might. So in that scripture, he says, I've laid help on one that is mighty. I've laid help on one that is mighty. So... This kind of help does not happen in a vacuum. There is something in you that must be developed, a capacity within you that must be developed, a might within you that must be developed for that help to be sustained. Now, in our anchor text analysis, those of us who wait on the Lord, not everybody, those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They will mount up with wings as an eagle. They will walk and not be weary. They will run. They will run not be weary. And they will walk and not faint. I'm praying that this will be your portion. All of this is basically saying there is a gospel of capacity that must be preached. Yesterday I established God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, Above all, that we ask or think according to the power that is at work in us. So what God will do for you is not disconnected from you, it's not apart from you. There's going to be something in you, a spirit in you, a capacity in you, a wisdom in you, an action in you that compels God to do what he wants to do. And that's why we're using these 40 days to build capacity spiritually, capacity in revelation, capacity in understanding, to handle what is to come. 
capacity, ladies and gentlemen, is not inheritable. I was sharing with one of my precious sons that it's not easy to lay hands on you and transfer everything, every capacity. You, you can't transfer capacity to an individual without that individual taking some measure of responsibility. And so I was explaining to them that even though we lay hands on people, pour oil on people, they also have the work to do. Neglect not the gift that is in you. Stir up the gift that is there's something for you to do. And that's why in scriptures, everywhere you see God working, there was something in the people that he walked with. Here we're taking on the spirit of Caleb. Why Caleb? Because Caleb and Joshua represented the only two people in their generation who through the spirit of faith, which I was talking about yesterday, through the spirit of faith, entered the promised land. You can imagine some theologians say over 600,000 men. Some put the number at 2 million. And amongst that entire generation, the Bible tells us, only two of the generation that came out of Egypt entered the promised land. Everyone that was over 20 did not cross over. So everyone who was 20, as at the time of this divine judgment, everyone above them died in the wilderness. I pray for you. We are on a journey. You will not die in the wilderness. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Now, sometimes when you're reading the Bible, it's very difficult for us to contextualize it. Now, I, I can look at this and say, and Truman Assembly is going from, has gone from its Egypt to a measure of its promised land. But it is not every one of us who came out that are going in. When we resume this at the SEPTA Convention Center, it will not be everyone who started out the Entrobin Assembly with us, who began this ministry with us, that would enter that space. That's just the way life is. As life happens, a lot of people will die off in the wilderness. I'm praying that in the name of Jesus, you will not die in the wilderness of life. Neither will you die in the wilderness of this vision and the enthronement mandate. That's why sometimes you see a lot of people have a lot of stories but no glory. Uh, in those days when we used to be at, uh, they have all those when we used to be stories, not where we are stories. Now, if you have where we used to be stories, but you don't have where we are stories, you missed it somewhere. You missed it somewhere. If you have where you used to be stories, where we used, where you used to, when we used to, used to, used to, when we used to, we used to be at, we used to, if you only have where we used to stories, and you don't have where we are stories, you missed it somewhere. The wilderness caught up with you. The wilderness caught up with you. So I want to focus on this this morning. Because my dream, hallelujah, is that nobody will perish in the wilderness of this mandate, of this vision, of life, of marriage in the name of the Lord Jesus. Not everybody that goes out will come in. Now, when you look at that scripture, he said he brought them out, give them scripture, that he might bring them in. God's plan is that when he brings a people out, he intends to bring them in. Let me give you an example. That doesn't mean that you attend a particular church forever. That doesn't mean you have this, you know, uh, we're at the same location forever. No, 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 no. But when you look at our lives, you can see that uh, we are, <laughs> we have come out, hallelujah, but I have also come in. Most of the things that you can see in Harvest House Christian Center have come in. Most of the things you can see in, in the master's place are coming. I'm not a wilderness child. Hallelujah. Most of the authority, most of the graces, most of the blessings, most of the favors, we won't be here if we did not get the coming out right and the coming in right. Hallelujah. 
So, you know, sometimes we'll come out with you, but it don't come out with you. Now, I learned this the hard way. The first year of enthronement Lagos, you know, my heart was very virgin, very simple, very simplistic, you know. It's not like it is now. Hallelujah. My heart now is a very complex heart. In those days, you know, I'd come up with a pioneering team and uh, we were working. I believe that we were all working towards, we had come out of where I was pastoring called Ugumosho and we we're trying to make the transition to Lagos with my team. Hallelujah. And then I believe that, you know, we were in this together, you know, uh, we were living together, error. We were eating together, error. We were doing everything together, error. You know. And uh, one day, one of the people, so we are, uh, we are a pioneering team of about maybe four, four, four or five people. I can't remember now. Maybe a lady and four men. And uh, so it was tough. I mean, the wilderness was tough. The wilderness was tough. So, but then we started managing. You know, there was a lady there around us who was helping us cook. It's Pastor Dilly's present wife. In those days, we give her 500 naira to cook, 1,000 naira to cook. Of course, we didn't have any option. The offerings of the church then was like 1,000 on Sundays, or sometimes 900 on Sundays. But that woman was there, very wise woman, and she would begin to. She was managing quite a number of us and managing. So I, I felt we're in this together. You know, I had probably leaders and ministers around me, elders around me. And I felt as a younger man in those days that for people to be with you, it means they are for you. I assumed as a younger man in those days that for people to be with you means they are for you. What happened? So one day in my ignorance, you know, I was just home believing God for how the work will move forward, praying for money inviting, sending SMS, doing all of that. Well, one of the pioneering team just ran back to my wife. I mean, not easy to share this kind of thing, but he went to my wife and said, Mommy, I want to share some things with you. He said, I've been hanging around some of these, our, our ministers, you know, and what they are saying about Reverend is not easy, oh. He said, in fact, they said it to the point where uh, we are just here, the thing is not working. <laughs> we are even telling people, don't come, but nothing is happening here. Yeah? Nothing is happening. That is, the people that we have prayed together, and they will be with you praying, you know, you know the, human, the, human, the human genome is a wonder. <laughs> that is, we will be praying together, like, oh, Father, Borobo, Setepa. And if then we don't come there, nothing is happening there. Is that? When my wife told me my heart broke, I was like, hey, you mean your elders and your ministers can be with you and be the ones driving people away from you? Ha. Ah. Instantly, I withdrew my life into my shell and I went to pray. And the Lord said to me, I can never forget. You know, I'm not as spiritual as everybody, but I can hear God smoke. So I went to pray, and the Lord now said to me, don't you know that the reason why a generation perished in the wilderness was because of the report of ten elders. Ten elders who brought an evil report. <laughs> ten elders. And that when they spied the land, only two had a positive report. Now, the question is, what is an evil report? Evil report is not uh, somebody carrying a horn. No, 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 no. You know when you say somebody is evil, many times you think that a person has horn, is wearing black. No, 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 no. An evil report is every report that is contrary to the report of the Lord. For who has believed, as I have forgiven scripture, who has believed our report? To whom is the hand of the Lord revealed? So it takes believing in God's report, faith in God's report, for the arm of the Lord to be revealed. Are you getting that? An evil report, therefore, is any report from anybody, from your husband, from your wife, from your friend, from your mentor, from your parent, from anybody. 
every report that contradicts the report of the Lord is an evil report. God was leading them to the promised land. And ten of the leaders were saying something else. And the Lord said to me, son, it was because of the 11, uh, 10 elders or, or leaders or ministers that they did not enter the promised land. He said, so it is important that not only your faith, that it's not just your faith that the times what you enter into. The faith of those you choose to surround yourself with also can impact. So an entire generation died in the wilderness because of the evil report of 10 leaders. Wow. It matters, therefore, the kind of people, the faith of the people that you surround yourself with. It matters. Once you surround yourself with the wrong kind of people, you will have the wrong kind of report and a wrong and an evil report will keep you in, it can keep you in the wilderness for the rest of your life. My, I was so afraid. I said, really? Hmm. Let me tell you what I did. Instantly, I withdrew from the entire ministers of our church totally. I was unavailable. They know they see me. I didn't have any meeting. And you know, I, that when God talks like that, I didn't have any meeting. I didn't have any conversation. I was just giving them instructions. Do this. Do that. Do this. Do that. Do this. Do that. I didn't have a meeting for two years of this meeting. Not a single meeting. I called for the next meeting when we had arrived at ShopRite. I proved to them that it could be done without them. <laughs> because instantly, if the faith of the 11 can compromise the whole, I decided to withdraw and to precipitate with my faith. My own. At least I know me, I believe. It matters the faith of those you choose to hang around. Hallelujah. It matters. The reference group, your reference group, it matters. <laughs> We're talking about some things here. So, uh, as I speak and all that, uh, uh, they didn't get to the promised land with us. <laughs> all those people I'm talking about, yeah, yeah. all of them, probably except the one that came to report their treachery. Is the only one who is still in this ministry today. None of them are going to get to the SEC with us. They will be fabricating theirs. Amen. So this brings me to what I want to share with you today. The faith of those, still talking about faith, I'm not done with faith. The faith of the kind of people you surround yourself around, can in, can, surround yourself with, can impact on your promised land. You can die in the wildernesses of life, not because of your making, but just because you permitted, you believed the report of nonsense people. This also happened in Papa Brothers ministry. In one day, five pastors left him. Five pastors. And as they left him, they now came to me as a small boy in the Gumo show. He said, let us organize program. I closed the door. I didn't know. I just something just, I wasn't as this, as wise as that. I just something just told me that, hey, you, you, you will close the door, your father. You want to be opening the door to them? No way. No way. They asked me for a program till tomorrow. Do you know today, all of those people I'm talking about, they did not get to the present promised land. They all wasted in the wilderness. Once I pray for you in the name of the Lord Jesus, you will not die in the wilderness of life. You will not die in the wilderness of this mandate. You will not die in the wilderness of this house. In the name of Jesus. We will rise together. We will grow together. We will build together. We will <laughs> the things, the prayer meetings you were at, you know, let me tell you something about this thing. You can be in a prayer meeting where certain things we have prayed about the future are not being the future you prayed about because you are not wise. They tell you how to think they go there. Let us be conscious of this. So we must be aware, therefore, of this uh, 
groups of people, and they are, they are in every church, you know, they are in every ministry, they are in companies, they are there. But once they begin to bring strange things to your hearing, wilderness conversations, that what God said he can do, he can do. So today I keep my own counsel. Yeah. I can't let somebody's faith affect me. No, 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 no. I keep my own counsel. I breathe everything on my face. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The faith of your reference group, listen to me, can either destroy you or raise you. Remember that man that was sick with the palsy? Jesus saw the faith of his four friends. And because of that, Jesus lifted him up. Let me ask you a question. Who are you surrounding yourself with? Whose opinion matters to you? Whose words matter to you? Who are the people you are surrounding yourself with? Who are these with you? Hallelujah. Please, if you end up in the wilderness, it will be because you chose to believe the report. Hallelujah. Of the ten elders instead of the report of Joshua and Caleb. So it said here, the reason why this man, Caleb, who you want to talk about today, forgive me, he said, but all these men who saw my glory and my eye have sworn they will not see, they will not enter the land. Ah, <laughs> but my servant Caleb, because he has a different spirit, Numbers chapter 20, uh, 14, verse 23, 24, he has a different spirit. One day I'd gone to visit a man and a woman of God. I won't mention their name now. He just said, Ditch is different. That's what he said. <laughs> they were looking at themselves. Don't you? Ditch is different. Ditch is different. Listen to me. You must have what I call a different spirit if you're going to have a different result. You're going to have a different spirit if you're going to step into the promised land. You're going to have a different Friend spirit. I'm always looking for people who have that spiritual different, a different spirit. He had a different spirit. Hallelujah. A different spirit. Need I remind you that the blessing shall rest on the head of the one who was separate from his brothers. Hallelujah. The blessing of the house of Kumai is on me. I'm separate from my brothers. The blessing of the house of the Buddha is on me. I'm separate from my brothers. And the blessing of my father's house is on me. I'm separate from <laughs> The blessing shall rest on the head of him. That is separate, different from his brethren. Different. Not an unjoy anointing. You know, sometimes people know what God said because they want to fit in. They, they want to fit into some friendships. They want to do some, some settings. They want to fit in. They, are, they can't stand alone. Hallelujah. Give them that scripture. The prophet said, I sat alone because of the hand that was upon me. If you can't have a faith company like Joshua, it's better to be alone. Amen. It's better to be alone. I sat alone. I sat alone. So he says, it is Caleb who has a different spirit. And he said, because he has followed me fully, fully. Oh, fully. And I'll talk about that a little bit. The spirit of Caleb, he followed me fully. Hallelujah. One day I'll share with you the story of Hezekiah. Not today. Now, he, he followed me fully. He now says, I will bring him into the land where he went and his descendants will inherit it. So, he had a different spirit because of that different spirit, he followed God fully. He entered the land and his, his descendants inherited it. I pray for you this morning in the name of the Lord Jesus. May my God give you a different spirit. May my God give you a different spirit. May my God give you a different spirit. May my God give you the spirit of Caleb. Through that spirit, may you enter your promised land. Through that spirit, may your children inherit the promised land. All these angelian, angelian anointing, you know, follow people around. It will cost you. It will cost you. Sometimes a man of conviction will have to stand alone on what he believes until he can find someone else that resonates with his faith. That's what I believe. I just added a friend now, one friend in the last next five years. In the, I just added one friend in the last 
The last one I added was Shonaike. And after Shonaike, I waited for another five years. Friendship is not by force. Until you can find a kindred spirit, sometimes better to stay alone. Then I found a man in Australia. Come on. Come on. I just began to see, you know, you're sharing your testimonies with him. He's sowing into it. There are some people I've stopped sharing my testimony with. Stop. Totally. Totally. In fact, the two of them and all that, you share the testimony with them, they are sowing. Reverend Victor, are you doing? And uh, he heard some testimony from us, and I just saw a seed from him in the direction of our testimony. A man, my friend in Australia, Pastor Lapunle, just heard our testimony. I said, I was saying, but, but we are not, we are just brothers. Idiot. No! <laughs> he said, the seed. You need to have some correct people around you. <laughs> Glory to God. So I want to talk about this spirit that brings people into their promised land. That spirit, because again, I'm telling you something. There must be something God will work with. It's not that uh, you just enter. There must be something God will work with. There was a different spirit in this man that made, that made God work. We're talking about capacity. Capacity. So let's share a few things with you. What was it about this man, Caleb? that made him outlive his generation, outlast everyone in his generation. Ko Barabaya. I can just imagine when they entered the promised land, the oldest people there, hallelujah, with Joshua. Only two in an entire generation. Oldest men. They are the ones who knew the story of the coming out and the story of the coming in. Let me pray. Let my God raise Joshua's here in the name of the Lord Jesus. Men who... Let the mantle of Caleb rest on somebody here. Men who were there at the beginning, and men who were there at the summit, in the name of the Lord. You know the story is good when we're there at the beginning. You can tell that God has been faithful, not that you fall by the wayside, the wayside believer. You can tell that, ah, ah, come on. You think about where we were, you look about where we say, hey, God, you are faithful. <laughs> I pray. Let the mantle of Joseph rest on somebody here. Joshua, rather. And the spirit of Caleb rest on somebody here in the name of the Lord. Let's focus on Caleb today. What was this spirit? We begin from Numbers 13, verse 26 to verse, Numbers 13, verse 26 to the end. And then Numbers 14, verse 1. I'm just going to mention these things. He had what I call a spirit of capability and a spirit of possibility. He had a spirit of capability and he had a spirit of possibility. And Caleb stealed the people before Moses and said, let us go up at once and possess it. For we are well able to overcome it. But the men that went with him said, we be not able to go up for they are stronger than we. What are the people talk around you talking about? Let us go up at once. Let me tell you, if I share dreams, visions, revelation with you, if you don't resonate, I will leave you alone. Let us go up at once, for we are well able. We are well able. I was like, ask my wife now. They share as things like, you know, ask my wife. You know, they resonate with revelation. I could not leave you. You know what I mean? Because I can't leave you. They affect me. I'm sharing divine revelation. Divine instruction, visions of where we're going, what God is saying we should do. And I can't see resonance. I can't see somebody saying, we are well and able. That's what you need in your elders. That's what you need in your leaders. That's what you need in your pastors. That's what you need in your friends. You need people who say, let us go up at once. We are well able. We are well able. A spirit of what, what some call a can-do spirit. A spirit of possibility. I love Dr. Sean so much, you know, because even when she has, the things I've been saying to her has been out of this world. She has never stood in the way of it. Never. And God has given her the privilege of living in the reality of it. Go and ask her. Most of the steps I took in God to get to where we were, were steps that did not make sense, but she never stood in the way of it. Never, even when she did not understand it. And the reward is now she's living the reality of it. Many times they're like, babe, not like this, <laughs> not like this. So it can do spirit. 
let me say this. Let us stop putting faith stumbling blocks in the life of our spouses, in the life of our husbands, in the life of our wives. Let us stop putting in the life of our children anywhere you see somebody operating in faith. Even if you don't believe, resonate with it. Even if you don't understand it, resonate with it. We are able. It is possible. It can be done. Why not? Those are the kind of things I like around me. As I see, well, I can how I see. Oh, I will all leave you. I don't get time for story. He had what I call number one: a spirit of capability and possibility. May he rest upon you now in the name of the Lord Jesus. You see, because before God can work with you, you must have believe that it is is possible and that you are capable. If you don't, there's nothing God can do with you. Who has believed that report? To whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? The spirit of capability. We are able. In fact, let's go now. You need those kind of people around you. Go, people. I want my daughter's dear, Mrs. Bolani Dada. Now go, she's a big. Fantastic woman of God. You are still thinking of the plan. Oh, go, you don't work out, don't work out. <laughs> she was one of the, the forces who birthed that love that movement here. Why we're still thinking, we need, you need some people like that in your space. Go, people. People who will not stand in the way of the plan, the purpose of God, the agenda of God, the instruction of God. Whatever God is saying we should take, we are going at once. Just give us the instruction. It was this way, the three mighty men in the camp of David. That's why they were mighty. Oh, that one will give me to drink of the waters at Bethlehem. You know what happened? Instant, before the instruction landed, whoa, they are gone. Go, 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 go. They got the stuff and brought the water back. Those are the kind of things you need in your space. Not who are analysis, analyzing until the, the grace leaves them. He had a possibility. Spirit, may it rest upon you this morning. In the name of the Lord Jesus. If you can't believe it's not possible. Some time ago, somebody spoke about us. Said how we can be building in this economy. I don't understand. Beautiful. <laughs> I, I understand. We shall build in every economy. Because we are ambassadors of Christ. The Nigerian economy does not determine our portion. Our portion is determined by the same nation that sent us. Are you there? Be careful again about the kind of people you put in your inner circle. Be careful. There must be people of faith. People who believe God. You don't want to fall sick and you have some guy there that does not believe some don't believe. You need people that can believe you will live long. Believe you survive cancer. Believe you. People who believe. You need people. You need a faith company. <laughs> Spirit of Caleb Still the people Let us go up at once Numbers 1330 Let's move God time it's Also you see the movement With a sense of urgency If Sir If this is what God is saying We should let us go up At once No matter how big they are They say no we are not able We are grass of us Once you start hearing things like that Disconnect We are able Hallelujah Let's go up at once Number two the spirit of Caleb, what I call a spirit of minimization. Numbers of the 14, verse 6 to verse 10. While the others are saying, oh, they are giants, they are this, they are that. He said, they are but bread for us. They are but bread for us. Hallelujah. It's a good land. If the Lord delights in us. Then he will bring us into the land and give it to us, a land that flows with milk and only. Don't rebel against the Lord, neither fear ye the people, for they are bread for us. Their defense is departed from them, and the Lord is with us. Fear them not. But all the congregation wanted to stone him. You see the kind of thing? They are bread for us. Small deal. Minimizing it. It's when Jesus said, in John 11, 11 verse 14, our friend Lazarus is sleeping and I'm going to wake him up. Be careful how you frame situation. Many of you over-exaggerate your circumstances. That's why your circumstances are complicated. Be careful of over-exaggeration. Somebody was dead, he said, he's asleep. Now, it is easier to wake up somebody who is asleep than to raise somebody who is dead. So if you have framed death as sleeping, then it empowers you to overcome it. How are you framing your situation? 
I'm dying, oh, I'm the only one. How you, how do you frame your challenges? How are you framing it? Are you framing your challenges in a terminal way? Or are you framing it in the language of faith? And then there was one Thomas there, the stupid disciple. He said, if, he, if he's asleep, he's going to be fine. Then God said to him, plainly. So there is faith speaking, there is plain speaking. If you want to operate in the miraculous effortlessly, you must settle for, for faith speaking instead of plain speaking. How are we doing? Well, fantastically well. <laughs> you know, you can't get me talking nonsense. We are doing well. It's not anywhere that we're here. Money is not our problem. I'm telling you, it's not even what I'm thinking about. <laughs> and I'm saying something like that, and you, you may think that I have like 10 million in my account. So my bank balance is 50K. <laughs> then you chat within 24 hours. Boom! The millions are in. How are you even talking? Are you the one who glorifies your circumstances? Hey, I'm dead, though. There's this in our father's house. If I don't go to this shrine in my village, all those kind of nonsense conversations. Minimize the devil. Maximize your God. Minimize what the devil is doing. You are not the only one that's gone through it. People have gone through it. People have gone through more. Stop over glorifying your circumstances, your situation. The more you glorify your situation, the more difficult it will be for you to overcome it. Glorify your God. Minimize this. A lump in my breast. I'm dead, though. I'm dead. There's a lump in my breast. I'm dead, though. I'm dead. Wake up here. Can I say to you in the name of the Lord Jesus, what you are going through right now is bread. In your life, have you seen anybody struggling for bread? You don't pick the bread, you'd see it. You know, the bread is not. Uh, you can my point. I said that they are just bread. He said they are departed. They are defense are departed. You need the people who talk like that in your space. People that you tell them the issues, hey, we all laugh. Just now, some of my spirit pastor how they talk. You guys, something that is big, like when they finish talking, they, like, they make it look small. And with that, your faith rises to overcome it. The spirit of Caleb, the spirit of minimization. They are bread for us. They are bread for us. All the properties in Agidin Bikeja, they are bread for us. The expansion of the SEC, bread for us. The growth for the church, bread for us. The building of education facilities, bread for us. The bread is going to be the easiest thing we have done. This building is the easiest building we have ever built. The other ones will be easier still. The next ones will be easier, will be faster, will be better for the part of the Joseph Shannon. Like you will need people that talk like that. Be careful, though. Don't talk like that, too. <laughs> they will think you are proud. Number three, the spirit of Caleb. Zerura Priya de Gora is a spirit of full followership. Numbers 14, verse 23. To verse 25. Numbers 32. Verse 11 to verse 12. They have, in fact, let me do 32. It says, Surely none of the men that came up out of Egypt from 20 years old and upward shall see the land which I swear unto Abraham, unto Isaac, unto Jacob, because they have not wholly followed me. Save Caleb, the son of Jephunneh. The Kenazite and Joshua, the son of Nun, for they wholly followed me. They wholly followed me. So there's full followership, there's partial followership. I don't know why you begin a journey you don't intend to finish. I don't know why people do things like that. Don't you know that if you begin a journey and you don't finish it, there's no award for people who don't finish their races? Study race, study race. Oh, you step, and then you just do one, two, three, then you stop saying, ah, I'm not tired. No, no medal for, there is no medal for quitters in life and destiny. There's no medal for quitters. The medal belongs to the finishers. Make up your mind to follow God fully. If God says to you, it takes six hours of prayer to make a service great, pray every message for six hours. That's my mentality. Whatever I say, I'm going to do, I'm going to do it. I will strain myself to ensure that everything, because let me explain, whenever you have fully followed God on a matter, your faith flies. Your faith flies. Your faith, your faith has wings. Hallelujah. 
because you did everything. You, there's something called having done all to stand, stand thereof. There's a realm of having done all. Whenever you have done all, a spirit of faith rests upon you. I've done my part. God, now you remain. Are you getting what I'm saying here? It's called full followership. Full obedience. Many of us are struggling today because of half-hazard obedience. They say tight. You go pay half tight. Uh, cut tight. They say first food. You go pay two, two food. Just doing things haphazardly and expecting whole results. People are doing things haphazardly and they're expecting full results. Tell you this man of God's secret. Whatever God says we're going to do, we're going to do it. Whatever God says we're going to do, whatever he says we're going to do it. I will first of all do what he tells me to do now. And I've learned when you do everything God tells you to do, how God tells you to do it, when God tells you to do it, your faith flies. Your faith flies. Full implementation of revelation. Full implementation. If God gives you revelation, confusion, full implementation. Because whenever, let me see, if you don't follow God fully, that spirit of condemnation will short circuit your faith. It will short circuit your faith. What did God tell you to do? Are you doing it completely and fully? What did He tell you to give? Let's wake up. This man followed me fully. Many run in a race, but except a man strives lawfully, he's not going to be crowned. Let's wake up and know what we're doing. My, my God. Full followership. Full followership. Will I ever preach a message now without six hours of praying? Which kind of message is that? Peppermint message or what? That's, that's, you labor in obedience. Then your faith will fly. You labor in obedience. In figures. God says, give 10 million. He gives 5 million. He's not clapping for himself. Oh yeah, award yourself. I enter this year. God give me inspect, inspect me about what to give. And I'm checking the figures. Measuring, measuring, measuring. How much have I given mommy and brother this year? How much? Because when you have obeyed God, when you have done all, your faith flies. It's called the spirit of full followership. But I told you a bit about, <laughs> about the life, but there's so much. Let me just jump because of time. It's full followers. <laughs> Number three or four is, I call it a spirit of prophetic remembrance. Joshua 14, 6 to verse 5. <laughs> 15. The spirit of Caleb is, a, is a, 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 a spirit of prophetic remembrance. Joshua 14, then the children of Judah came to Joshua and Gilead, and Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, said unto him, You know the thing that the Lord said unto Moses, the man of God, concerning me in Kadesh Barnea. I was 40 years old when Moses, the servant of God, sent me from Kadesh Barnea to espow out the land. And I brought him word again as it was in my heart. Nevertheless, my brethren that went with me made the heart of the people melt. But I wholly followed the Lord my God. And Moses swore that day, saying, Surely the land whereupon your feet has trodden shall be yours and your children forever. Because you have wholly followed the Lord my God. Now the Lord, the Lord has kept me alive. And he said these 40 and 5 years. Ever since the Lord spake this word unto Moses. While the children of Israel wandered in the wilderness. And now lo, I am this day 85 years old. And yet I am strong today as I was in the day that Moses sent me as, it, as my strength was then. Even so is my strength now for war. But to go out and to come in. Now therefore give me this mountain. Give me. 45 years later. Give me this mountain. Give me this mountain. Let me ask you a question. Where are all the prophecies you were given? All the impartations we gave you. All the prophetic. Where is it? This man documented a prophecy for 45 years. Documented a prophecy. Was not discouraged. And 45 years when he stepped in, God has kept me alive. Oh, yeah. Give me this mountain. My prophet promised me children. Give me this mountain. My prophet promised me this. Give me this mountain. My prophet promised me no noise in our temple. Give me this mountain. The Come on, come on. My prophet promised me that I will never lack the gift of men. Give me this mountain. What determines the mountains you can take at the utterances your men of God gives to you? But do you have the spirit of prophetic remembrance? 
According to the prophets that have gone ahead, the fact that the prophets has gone ahead does not mean it's no longer relevant. You have a place where you are documenting prophecy. And then you are worried with them. 45 years. A man who held on to the promises of God for 45 years. May God raise them in this house. In the name of the Lord Jesus. In the name of the Lord Jesus. As you are standing watching me this morning, let the wind of the Lord refresh your spirit. Parozima ne kalaba. You know, there are many things that if I have time, it's just that I'm busier now than at any other time. Travel here, travel here, I'm trying, you know. <laughs> I will tell you waiting, my man of God tell me. One of the reasons why we don't die near in this church, God said to me, there shall be no noise. My man of God said to me, there shall be no noise in this temple. So we just be, few noise, few noise, no noise in this temple. There are many things he said to me. Many things. I'm the one you came to to honor like this. I'm very observant, you know. You came to sit down, not because he was talking to me. You came to sit down, not because you had to preach, just to honor me. And he took his agbada and said, you will never lack me. We can't lack me. <laughs> we not only do we have the word for it, we have the prophetic injunction for it. Prophetic remembrance. I dare say many have left their prophecy, which is a weapon of their warfare, and they are struggling like people that don't have any word over their lives. I pray for you this morning. May my God refresh your spirit. Oh, je mario priane sha. Begin to remember clearly every prophetic encounter that your man of God has given to you. Every prophetic word, every prophetic text, every prophetic message, every prophetic conversation. Let it come afresh to your mind. Hey, my time, oh, <laughs> number five. Let's jump. I explain that. You must be what I call a prophetic collect, a prophecy collector. Prophecy collector. Let me explain. All the prophecy, Isaiah, Jeremiah, we are reading it today to develop our faith because somebody documented it. What he said in scripture is not all. Whole is a prophecy. Halalamaya in old time did not come by the will of man. He said, but holy men of God speak as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. But as they were moved by the Holy Ghost, some documented, some documented. And the ones that are documented is what we are now laying on all to bed prayer, to pray that we are seeing happen in our life today. What if they were not documented? Do you even have your personal prophecy book where every word of the month is there? Every prophecy for your giving is there. Do you have things like that? Do you have your own book of lamentations, Jeremiah? Hey, you must. I have my own. I have a formula called the I already love body commentary. I'm cro I've crossed 2,000 entries now on my way to 3,000 entries. Each of these is 1,000 entries. 1,000 entry volume 1, 1,000 entries volume 2. 1,000 entries, volume 3. Don't just move into your life and feel you don't have for You have a word. They have given you a word. Where is it? Where's the word they give you? He was a prophecy collector. Number five, the spirit of Caleb is a meritocratic spirit. When it was time to give his daughter, he said, oh yeah, I'm a mountain taker. Anybody who can take this mountain and definitely give a part amongst you, According to it says, and Caleb drove them. Where's the message? And unto Caleb, the son of Jephne, he gave a part among the children of Judah, according to the commandment of the Lord of Joshua, even the city of Arba, which is the city of Hebron. And Caleb drove these three sons out, and the children of Israel, and he went up there. And Caleb said, Anyone that smites Kiriat Shepha, give him that scripture. If you smite Kiriat Shepha and take it, I will give my daughter Aksa. I don't know if you hear the gift daughter anyhow. Go. That is, he had a meritocratic spirit. You want my daughter? Go and take a mountain. A mountain taken is the bride for my daughter. A mountain you take. Let me say, like tribe of lazy men. A mountain. Maybe I'll put that as a policy. I'm joking. You say you want to marry from this church? Yeah, go and take a mountain. Go and win souls. Go and lead a soul, love circle. Take mountains before you come and take a daughter. Take mountains before you come and take a daughter, or else you become a liability to daughter. Take mountains before you come and take a daughter. A lazy men, they marry as a woman, they sponsor them around town. So he said, You want my old daughter? I will give you access, but go and take a mountain. He was meritocratic. A lazy man, take a mountain. 
I've learned that many times, if you give people things without them taking mountains, they don't value it. They don't value it. So the man went out to risk his life to take the mountain. You saw that again also in the Ministry of Saul. Oh, you want to marry my daughter? You want to marry a king's daughter? Oh, yeah, go and bring me 100 kings of the Philistine. Go and bring me 100 kings. Go and win 100 souls. <laughs> go and win 100 souls. Let me see. And then eventually, David went for 200 souls and came back for the world. You need meritocratic. You say, yeah, call, prove it. Yeah, this is cool. You won't be husband, prove it. I may do this, you know, God give me liberty. Go, let's see what you have done first. No freebie this season. Lastly, the spirit of Caleb is a transgenerational spirit of impartation. When that guy took the mountain, took the daughter, Joshua chapter 15, verse 18, verse 20, my time is up. They are taking the mountain. You know. The daughter says, look, that's the scripture for Aleki church. I'm coming to Aleki soon. Hey. The Bible said when the daughter came in, she too was a mountain taker. She moved. She moved the husband. Said, Omar, I don't know if he's down here like this. Are you there? You have given me the mainland. Give me springs of water. She moved her husband. So the same way the father was a territory taker, the spirit of a territory taker was in the daughter. And even though she was married, she was subtly moving her husband to take the right mountains. Hallelujah. She was a territory taker. And so the transgenerational spirit of faith that was in Caleb was... What did I say this morning? To enter your promised land will require the spirit of Caleb. The spirit of Caleb is the spirit number one of full followership. The spirit of Caleb, I'm about to pray for you. The spirit of Caleb is the spirit of minimization. The spirit of Caleb is the spirit of capability and possibility. The spirit of Caleb is the spirit of full followership. The spirit of Caleb is a spirit, thank you Lord Jesus, of remembrance, prophetic remembrance. The spirit of Caleb is a spirit, a meritocratic spirit. The spirit of Caleb is a transgenerational spirit. When these things be in you and abound, you're going to see God move like never before. Once again, lay both hands on your stream. It's impartation time. I transmit to you the spirit of a possessor, the spirit of a mountain taker, the spirit of a territory taker, in the name of Jesus, your portion will not be small. I transmit to you the spirit of meritocracy, the spirit of full followership, in the name of the Lord Jesus. And that which you are receiving from me in this meeting online, you will transfer to your children. Don't settle for less. I pray that the spirit and the garment of Caleb comes upon you. In Jesus' mighty name. By God's grace, we'll be together by 7, 6, 5 p.m in the evening, 5 p.m. in this evening. God bless you. Be empowered to finish the year strong and take possession of all that God has in store for you now and in the new year. Join the 40-day Territorial Dominion Prayer and Fasting at the Enthronement Assembly starting Tuesday, 10th October to Saturday, 18th November, 2023. We are live every morning at 6 a.m. on YouTube and Mixlr, and we gather physically every evening at 5 p.m. at the new SEPTA Convention Center, Plot 2, Latif Jaconde, Agidingbi, Keja, Lagos. Ministering daily is Reverend Dej Yolabode, Senior Pastor, Enthronement Assembly. Brace up for the 40-day Territorial Dominion Fast 2023. It will change your life forever. Enthronement Assembly, activating and actualizing God's royalty in you. Another opportunity to apply for the Enthronement Assembly Ministry Internship Course 2 is here. Are you called to ministry? Is there a voice inside of you you can't ignore? Get equipped with a Bible-based ministry training, hands-on internship experience, and the impartation that will help you fulfill your purpose on earth. Application is ongoing for full-time and part-time students. Pick up your form at the Latitude or at the EHCC Information System stand after the service. Enroll now for the Enthronement Assembly Ministry Internship Course 2 and be thoroughly equipped for your ministry. 
For more inquiries, call 0703-585-9710. Enthronement Assembly, activating and actualizing God's royalty in you. We are live on site and online every Sunday at the Enthronement Assembly for two power-packed services. The first service at 7.30 a.m. and the second service at 9.30 a.m. Venue is Neka House, Ikeja. And if you're out of town, you can join live on all Enthronement Assembly streaming platforms, ministering live, Reverend Dejola Body, activating and actualizing God's royalty in you.